Well, I'll be happy to answer any questions that I can. We're still in the process of getting all the information from the trainer. There is a chance Josh Jacobs could play. Uh, incognito is still questionable. And uh, we got really good news on Trayvon Mullen. He's, he's got a chance to play this week. Um, and uh, so does LaMarcus Joyner. But again, I won't update the exact nature of their injury until I get further notice from Rod Martin. Going to this game, will, the, will any of these guys play based on whether you're still alive as the game starts? No, we're gonna we're gonna play the best players that we have available and try to win the game. And uh, we don't have enough bodies to rest players, so we're gonna try to win the game in spite of the circumstances. Your thoughts on on uh, on uh, Daryl Worley? like moving around so much and kind of filling in at a number of different spots. That wasn't not the plan. Yeah. That was more of a necessity. <laughs> you know, we, we lose uh, corners, we lose nickels, we lose safeties, we move whirly around. But that is what we have talked about for the last couple months is using him as a strategic weapon, a guy that can do a number of things. Maybe if it's first down, maybe you want him close to the line of scrimmage. Maybe if there's a great receiver, you want him involved in coverage. Um, you know, there's a lot of things that he can do, and I think yesterday was a great step in that direction. Really proud of him and his performance. Sharp too, and he came in and is he the guy going for it? Right tackle for you? He did okay. You know, he's uh, he was in a tough spot. We asked him to be a tight end going into the game to give us uh, a different look um, in the play action passing game and in the running game. Certainly, he's not a great route runner yet, but uh, Brandon Parker struggled. And we made a change, and um, right now the ball's in uh, Sharp's corner. We plan on starting Sharp. He's, he deserves it. He did some good things as the game uh, unfolded. How much attention do you and the coaching staff pay to the other dominoes that need to fall in order for you guys to make the playoffs, if any at all, knowing that you guys also have to prepare for a game? No, nah, you, you can't do that. You, you can't control what's going on. You know, we just uh, got a lot of young players playing. We've been saying that from the beginning. We're going to try and use this as an opportunity to uh, unleash Isaiah Johnson a little bit and uh, hopefully continue to develop our, our roster and our team and try to win games. And if we get some help, that'll be great. That would be awesome. Like you said, you don't have a lot of control over all that stuff, but do you look at this game as, as a nice evaluation tool to see kind of who rises to the occasion in, in a game that, that could, you know, potentially put you in a playoff situation? That's what we did yesterday. I mean, it was the same situation yesterday. And we had some guys really step up big time. So, you know, you watch Renfro and Worley and DeAndre and um, a number of other players that uh, really did a good job. So, yes, that is, uh, that is part of the plan. What has Compton brought you? Compton? Yeah. You know what? He had, he had like 12 or 13 tackles. He's wearing the green dot, which means he's the man communicating with Gunther. Uh, you know, making the adjustments, making the calls, the alerts, checking out of uh, coverages and into blitzes and vice versa. Uh, he got a great demeanor about him, very poised, very calm. I went out there on the field to check on one of our players, and uh, he got on my case for not smiling, not having a good time. Uh, you know, he's a weird dude, man. He loves football, and that's why he fits in here. But uh, he's, he's really made some plays and made an impact here. Um, at a position where, where we really needed him. Good, man, good. He played good. He had three or four PBUs, I think, in the first half. Um, he covered a big tight end, covered a slot receiver. He showed his ability to do a couple different things. And he's always been a good tackler. And uh, one thing about Lawson that is, is really impressive is his versatility. He can be a nickel. He can play on the outside. And he can play on special teams. And he likes football, too. Trent Brown on injured reserve. Do you anticipate him having surgery? I don't think so. Yeah, I can't really update you on that right now. He's uh, uh, still on the on the mend, but I don't believe so. John, you mentioned a couple times with all the moving parts around Derek, how proud you are of the way he's played. But with all those moving parts around, how tough is that going to be? I know there's still one game to go, but how tough is that going to be to assess his play this year with all those moving parts around him and what he's been able it's to do? It's not hard. I mean, we've we spent a lot of time together. He's done a lot of good things. You know, I know there's a lot of swirling reports out there, uh, but Derek's done a great job.
He's done a heck of a job for us. Let it go. Hunter, uh, you mentioned him earlier. Um, Hunter, first game back, you know, yesterday, coming back from a tough injury. Uh, how do you think he played, and uh, what does he add to the offense when he's out there? <clears throat> You know, he played great. That was his first 100-yard receiving game since high school. So, uh, you know, it was pretty cool. He uh, he showed he can make make uh, some yardage after the catch. <clears throat> he also showed he can block. We ran a toss crack, and he cracked the defensive end, did a nice job. He had a couple of nice punt returns, and he really saved field position one time by somehow stopping the bouncing ball from uh, bouncing inside our five. He made a great, great effort uh, in the return game. And he just gives you such a sense of confidence in some tough passing situations. He can run different routes, and he's very friendly with his route running style. He rarely fools a quarterback, and uh, you got a lot of savvy for a young guy, to say the least. What made the run defense so successful yesterday? Uh, you know, I think it was a, a number of things. I think Paul did a good job. You know, we, we moved the front a lot, and uh, the Chargers, you know, they didn't really stay persistent to the run either, but. Uh, you know, I thought our guys got off blocks. Uh, we, we stunted the front a little bit. And Compton made a lot of tackles, and uh, it was a combination of a lot of those things. What are the characteristics that have kept, that's kept DeAndre here for four years under different coaches with, uh, you know, with always, there's other, always another lead back in front of him, but he always stays? Yeah, you know, he, when I got here, he, he got hurt, if you remember, last year in training camp. So we never really got to know him um, as close as we did till this summer. But uh, when you're around him, you see a guy that is really professional. He knows who to block. He knows exactly what to do. And he can run the ball inside or out. He doesn't make mistakes. He won't fumble it. Um, you know, he can run an array of routes. He's comfortable in a no-back formation. He's comfortable behind a fullback. He can run from the offset position in a shotgun. And we came out to start the third quarter. We didn't have enough guys for the kickoff return team, so we threw him out there in the front line. He just knows football. And uh, those are the kind of guys that uh, allow us, I think, to win a game like we did yesterday because in a, in a tough spot, uh, we can ask him to do a number of things well, and he did it.